So I've been working as an independent wrestler for a few years, and I was coming up on the five-year anniversary of my first show. So I wanted to get booked somewhere. None of the places that I usually worked were running that weekend, so I took a booking about two hours away from home. Um, as the day grew closer, I got some more information. Uh, this was going to be one of those shows where every match was in a steel cage. And also, the uh, promoter was short on a referee, so asked me if I knew anybody. I really didn't, but he said, hey, all they got to do is open and close the cage door. What can go wrong, right? I immediately think of my best friend. He's a huge wrestling guy. We've taken WrestleMania road trips together all the time. So he was pretty smart to the business, been to a couple training sessions, but had really no desire to be a uh, in-ring performer. So we get to the show. I have my match, first match on the card in a steel cage, which was weird enough anyway. My friend rests that match. All is fine. As the night goes on, turns out my friend winds up refereeing every single match. And the main event had the company's top baby face, and the finish was going to be that the top heel rushed the cage. This top heel was also who happened to be the booker. The baby face was going to be left in a bloody pile. I don't know if he didn't feel comfortable or what the deal was, but they reached some kind of an agreement where the heel was going to do the favor to get the color for the baby face. Um, after he does it, for some reason, he starts then, like, dropping elbows and dropping legs. And I'm watching through the curtain. Then all of a sudden, the heel, Booker, makes a hasty retreat from the ring, comes back through the curtain, and he's going, oh, my God, I'm stupid. I'm such an idiot. And my friend's falling behind him. Then he starts to take off his gear. Well, it turns out he had dropped the gimmick down in his tights, and he had mangled himself. My friend is standing there dumbfounded, and right about then, the promoter, who was an elderly man, comes up with a stack of envelopes. I get mine. My friend's still kind of standing there in a trance, and he's got an envelope for him, too. And he he's confused. He doesn't even know what this envelope means. I tell him to take it, and we immediately leave and get in the car. So my friend got his first wrestling payday, his first night working a show on my five-year wrestling anniversary, and saw a man almost castrate himself. <laughs> Well, happy five-year anniversary to you, and I'm glad you got to share that five-year anniversary experience with your friend who knew nothing about the wrestling industry but got to referee 12 wrestling cage matches in one night. For the listener, this caller was using a lot of inside terminology. Maybe all of you picked up on it, but to do the favor, I don't. that's not even something anyone says anymore. Essentially, the bad guy was going to cut the good guy with a razor blade. And then the bad guy stuck the razor blade in his pants. That's what he meant by that. And then as the bad guy was dropping elbows, that razor blade was shimming around his crotchular region. And he cut himself. I titled this call a wrestling circumcision. Because essentially that's as close as it comes. You hear stories about wrestlers holding the razor blade in between their cheeks. When I trained at OVW, Robert Gibson would talk about. That's where he would put his razor blade. In between his teeth and his cheeks, he said, quote, if you put it up there, nothing can go wrong, end quote, which always blew my mind. But you can't change the mind of those old school wrestlers. What they did back then, essentially, is the only way to do things. And we even know that to be a fact based off of some older gentlemen's wrestling podcasts uh, at the current time. But the headline of the story is man cuts his penis. With a razor blade after he cuts another man's forehead. Maybe it's a shortened headline, but that's the gist of it. And I couldn't have been happier that that actually happened, didn't happen to me, and didn't happen to anybody I knew. But if you do think about it, a poor guy. Let's hope that never happens again. Hey, thanks for watching. That call was part of a whole podcast called Wrestling Anonymous. Listen to the whole thing weekly. Wherever you listen to your podcast, go subscribe. And while you're at it, subscribe right here on YouTube to Colt Cabana's channel. Thank you.